Well, let's take a closer look at Taiwan's global trading picture. Now, here we have the island's top five export partners in 2021. China and Hong Kong ranked first, taking about half of all Taiwan's overseas sales. That's worth almost $190 billion. Southeast Asia took about 15% of the island's exports. That is about equal to what the U.S. Imported, But the trend in exports has recently favored the United States. Now, Taiwan's exports to China grew by 71 percent between 2016 to 2021. Electronic parts made up more than half of goods entering Asia's biggest economy. But on the other hand, exports to the U.S. nearly doubled, growing by 97 percent. Top U.S. purchases of Taiwanese goods include electrical machinery, vehicles, plastics, as well as iron and steel products. Well, as a source of Taiwan's imports, mainland China and Hong Kong rank first with a 22% share. And the U.S. only had a 10% share, falling behind Japan, Europe and Southeast Asia. And over the last five years, Taiwan's imports from China have surged about 87% as compared to 44% from the U.S. Well, many Taiwan-based companies in high-tech industries also operate their factories in the mainland. And the world's biggest chip maker, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, or TSMC, is one of them. However, just 10% of TSMC's revenue last year came from the mainland, while more than half comes from the U.S. And some analysts feel that this may be an indicator that when it comes to semiconductors, China may be falling behind. For a deeper look at these trade talks between the United States and Taiwan, we're joined now by Ross Feingold. He's a director of business development at Safe Pro Group. That's a consultancy that advises clients on security issues around the world. Mr. Feingold, thank you for joining us. Now, the fact that these talks are going to happen, that's not surprising. But the United States knows that there is a risk inherent uh, in pursuing the talks. They would have calculated the value of that risk as well. What to you? is the value of this risk for the United States for what China is just going to see as more provocation? These trade talks uh, between Taiwan and the United States uh, have actually gone on for literally decades. Uh, the, the U.S. and Taiwan have a number of bilateral platforms and dialogues under different names. Sometimes they get renamed and, and, and announced as if there's something new, but the reality is that these talks have gone on for a while. And uh, there, as your report indicated, there's significant bilateral trade between Taiwan and the United States. It's not a surprise that the two sides would look to remove some of the current trade barriers that prevent additional trade growth. And it's not intended to be a free trade agreement. So it's really making changes around the margins more so than uh, the, the, the profile that a free trade agreement would have. So China is going to be upset, but the reality is even China engages with Taiwan on trade issues, whether through uh, bilateral mechanisms or through multilateral mechanisms such as uh, the, the WTO. Uh, what, what's interesting here is that Taiwan was not invited to join the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, the IPEF, with the first round of countries. There was a lot of disappointment here in Taiwan because of that decision by the United States. So in a way, uh, making such a to-do about talks that actually have gone on for, for years and years is also a way for the United States to give something positive uh, to Taiwan. And it's a way for the Taiwan government to say uh, the United States is, is on our side as well. And on the point of that framework, uh, Mr. Feingold, uh, and more broadly, how far are economic ties with Taiwan uh, a key arrow, perhaps, for uh, at least the impression of U.S. commitment and engagement in the region insofar as its Indo-Pacific strategy is concerned? That's a great question, because it really depends whether these talks have as their ultimate goal, again, something that's more in the nature of, of public relations and things that would fall under that uh, category would be if uh, there's a little bit of growth as a result of these talks. And, for example, 
uh, U.S. agriculture exports to Taiwan, if Taiwan were, were to adjust some of its uh, inbound uh, control mechanisms that have often frustrated uh, U.S. ag uh, uh, exporters. Uh, on the other hand, if the outcome of, of these talks would be for a company such as TSMC or other companies in the Taiwan tech supply chain to go beyond what's already been announced, uh, and I'm referring to TSMC's uh, construction of a fab in, in the U.S. state of Arizona, if there's greater investment uh, as a result of these talks, which I'm not optimistic is necessarily going to be an outcome, uh, but if that were to occur, and, and we're, there were billions of U.S. dollars of deals of, of Taiwan tech companies building factories in the U.S., then we would say that there's really some strategic outcomes uh, from these talks. But again, I, I don't think that's very likely in the in the short term. And, and whatever the outcome of these trade talks, uh, Mr. Feingold, let's look at the more immediate impact. Uh, Taiwan and China, they already have very deep, very close uh, trade relations. Do you expect to see retaliation from Beijing at all trade-wise against Taiwan? And, and what kind of action might they take? Well, we've seen several examples of that in the last year and a half uh, with agricultural products being uh, temporarily banned from Taiwan. Uh, other types of exports in traditional industry or tech industry products also, or China banning certain products from being exported from China to Taiwan. One example recently was, was natural sand. So uh, th there's definitely some tools like that that China will use. H how far they would go with that uh, is unknown, and they have to be careful that they don't ban any products uh, that, that are actually key to their own economy. So again, right now, it's it's more around the edges, but they definitely have that tool. And sometimes the numbers might look small because the, the export value might be in, in a few million or tens of millions of U.S. dollars. But, but of course, the, it does have an effect on the, the people here in Taiwan who actually grow or manufacture those products. All right, Mr. Feingold, thank you very much for that. That was Ross Feingold, the uh, Director of Business Development at SafePro Group.